what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Marvel Legends 20th anniversary of Marvel Legends, Iron Man. And how insane is it that Marvel Legends has been around for 20 years? I remember when they first came out, like how ahead of the game they were. This along with Fantastic Four Classics and Spider-Man Classics, all three of those lines, I feel like really propelled six inch action figures into a whole new realm. And Toy Biz was just killing things back in the day, I swear, man. They were so ahead of everybody else, and they really ushered in a new era of action figures just in general. Marvel Legends and Toy Biz and all those different lines definitely changed the game. So it's crazy to think that that was 20 years ago because I remember seeing these in stores and just being blown away by how far action figures had come in such a short time. And yeah, here we are 20 years later. Uh, you know, a whole different company is making them at this point. And, you know, for a while there... I thought Hasbro was trying to get rid of Marvel Legends, you know. Uh, Toy Biz started it, and I feel like for the longest time, Hasbro really couldn't get out of the shadow of the Toy Biz Marvel Legends stuff for adult collectors and guys like me, you know. And I think for a while, they were just trying to get away from Marvel Legends stuff. And uh, But, you know, <laughs> the fans were too crazy. The fans were too strong. Uh, the fan base was too committed to the 6-inch Marvel Legends figures, and Hasbro just couldn't get away, so they kind of came around and started to produce like amazing six inch Marvel figures. Uh, and Hasbro's doing a great job now, but it's it's insane to think to think about the journey, you know. Started off with Toy Biz, went to Hasbro, it kind of almost went away, but the fans kept it around, and now here we are 20 years later, two different companies later, and just a million figures <laughs> later, you know. So much stuff has come out. But uh, anyways, enough rambling. Let's go ahead and get into it, starting off with the awesome packaging. Um, I love this Toy Biz inspired packaging. I'm definitely going to need to get another one of these so I can hang these on my wall. But I really like this. Obviously, it's not a full clamshell like it was back in the day uh, because they want to keep it eco-friendly and stuff. So we do have like the plastic right here. And you can see through the window, you could see Iron Man, um, all the accessories that he comes with. And then behind him, you could see some like some card art that's inspired by the comic book that came with the original Toy Biz Iron Man. So that's really dope. It would have been cool if he came with a comic book, but, you know, I, I doubt we'll ever see that kind of thing again. Uh, but aside from that, I love the uh, background here. The, in this case, it's a cardboard background, and I like how we have the logos for all the different types of characters. I remember back in the day... Like, the packaging of Toy Biz said something about Thunderbolts. I can't remember if it was a Thunderbolts logo or just a mention of Thunderbolts on the back. But I remember at the time, a lot of people thought they were going to make Thunderbolts because of the little Easter egg. Um, Toy Biz never got around to it, but Hasbro did eventually. And at this point, we now have a bunch of Thunderbolts figures on our shelves. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I think this looks awesome. Right here, it does say Marvel Legends in that old school Toy Biz font. Right here it says 20 years. On the back, we get a little bit of information about the Marvel Legends line, and then we have a shot of the figure there. Awesome. But anyways, enough about this awesome packaging. Let's go ahead and open this figure up and take a look. All right, so here we have Iron Man right out of the box. And I've got to say, I think this is a really nice figure. I'm liking this guy a lot more than I was expecting to. Originally, I wasn't all that excited about him because I thought he was basically just going to be a repaint of the AI Iron Man. And even that figure is just a repaint of the 80th anniversary Iron Man. And I get it. This is a really good Iron Man body. So I could understand why Hasbro would want to get as much use out of it as possible. So I figured that's why they were just going to give it to us in a different yellow like a slightly different yellow color with a different head and then call it a day but i'm really happy to see that they actually gave us some new parts with this figure his torso is completely different from this iron man and i didn't even realize that until i started to see some in-hand pictures in fact when mcu collectors started sharing some pictures that's when i saw that he had some new parts and that's when i got excited about this guy and that's when i really <laughs> wanted to get it so I hit up Dorkside and now I have it. But yeah, I'm happy to see that he has a completely new torso. You can see that there's not as much muscle definition. The arc reactor is a little bit more flush. He doesn't have the huge rings around the shoulders or anything. You could see the rings, but they're subtle. They're not as like pronounced as they are on the um, AI version. So, you know, like, I don't really have a preference or whatever. I think both of these look really good. They're just different interpretations of classic Iron Man. So, I like it. I like that there's subtle differences between these two. Of course, there are some reused parts here. Um, they do share the same arms and they do share the same legs. But aside from that, there's nothing in common. The torsos and the heads are different. So, uh, that was really good to see. But yeah, I love this AI Iron Man, by the way. 
But uh, I love this guy too, man. This guy came out really, really good. I love the helmet with the horns. That came out nice. And it's just a fun figure to mess around with. It feels very solid. All these Iron Man figures feel very good from Hasbro. They've been killing it when it comes to classic Iron Man stuff. So even though this Iron Man isn't made up of completely new parts, I think that Hasbro did a pretty good job with the new stuff they did give him. Starting off at the head, I've always been a big fan of this old school pointy mask look for Iron Man. And I think that Hasbro did some nice work on this head sculpt. I really like the faceplate because it's very simple. All we have is the yellow faceplate with the black cutouts for the eyes. And it's much more simple than like some of the more modern Iron Man helmets and face plates so i like that a lot but i think they did a pretty good job with it man it looks super good and then wrapping around to the rest of the head you can see that we have these lines sculpted on the back of the head and on the neck and hasbro actually put in a paint wash in there to bring out some of those details so that is very awesome to see they need to do that all the time going forward <laughs> but yeah they came out nice but yeah i like this face sculpt a lot man super cool super old school and it just captures the old classic Iron Man look perfectly. Moving down into the torso, as you can see, the torso doesn't have quite as much muscle definition as the AI Iron Man. I knocked over all kinds of crap trying to get this, but look at that. See the muscles on the AI Iron Man? He's got kind of a six pack going, and I mean, he's still, he's got some muscles here, but just not as many. But yeah, I think this new sculpt is nice. As I mentioned before, the arc reactor is sunken in a little bit and a little bit more flush with the rest of his chest. As you can see here, this one kind of pops out a little bit. And then moving down to the waist here. Look, even the waist is different. That's awesome. Like the belt buckle is a different size. And then on the uh, 20th anniversary Iron Man, we do have a bit of a wash in there as well that matches the head and the neck. And then same thing right here on the forearms. So yeah, that's nice. And then same thing with the feet. Even though the feet are reused from that previous Iron Man, they changed it up a little bit by adding a paint wash. So that's awesome. He does have pins in these legs. That's pretty much the only flaw on this figure. If they would have gave him new pinless arms, this thing would have been pretty much perfect, right? Same thing goes for the last couple of Iron Mans. But yeah, I love this old school classic looking Iron Man. Uh, this head sculpt really does it for me. And I really do appreciate that we got some new sculpting work on the torso and stuff. So, yeah, they did a good job with it, I think. And then for accessories, Iron Man does come with a pretty good amount of stuff. Some of it we've seen before and some of it's kind of new. But let's go ahead and start off with the hands. We do get two different sets of hands. We have a pair of fists. And then we have a set of open repulsor blast hands that do have a peg hole in the center. So you could plug in some blast effects. And then he also has, like, this smoke trail or, like, I don't know how you want to describe this thing, but it's some smoke that you could put around his hands to kind of add to the blast effects. So I think that's pretty cool. And then he does come with an unmasked Tony Stark head. And I think this is a pretty nice head sculpt. I've seen a couple of people say that it looks a lot like Charles Bronson, and I could definitely see that in there. But I think it works for Tony Stark, and I think it captures the way that he looked in the 70s and you know that era. I think this head sculpt captures that very well. And if you were to repaint this and kind of make it look a little bit more grimy. This could really work for a demon in the bottle head sculpt. I think uh, this, I, I think the potential's there. So I think uh, that's a nice looking head sculpt. It's not my favorite one. My favorite is still the 80th anniversary Tony Stark head sculpt. That thing is awesome. And then aside from those things, he also comes with this backdrop. And this is supposed to like pay homage to the things that came with the Series 1 Iron Man from Toy Biz. Um, obviously, back in those days, we used to get comic books and, you know, diorama pieces. So this kind of shows love to that. We get a comic book cover here with a bunch of different Iron Man armors. And then on the, on the back, we get a look at this little Tony Stark, Stark Tower kind of <laughs> sign. And, you know, like I said, back in the Toy Biz days, we got a diorama that had this same thing. So... I think this is a cool way to pay homage to that, but at the same time, it's kind of like, man, it would have been cool to get like an updated new diorama, you know? <laughs> but it is what it is. At least they gave us a bunch of other cool accessories, so, you know, I'm okay with this. Like I said, I think it would work really well for a, a cool display piece. You could kind of put Iron Man in the front of it, and, uh, you know, that, that could definitely look dope on the shelf or something. And then we do have this here, which is like, a little stand that has uh, the words Marvel Legends on here and it's in that old school Toy Biz font. So that's cool too, but you know, I don't know. I have kind of mixed feelings on this backdrop. 
I would have preferred a diorama to be honest, but I think uh, there's some potential to to make to make use of this to to make it look cool in your display. So I probably will use it, but I would have preferred a diorama right. for sure. And then for anybody that's curious, here's a quick head swap between these two Iron Man figures, and the mask does look pretty good on this body, but the yellows don't quite match, and you could see that here as well. But you know, if you want to do this, this is something that's possible. And even though the yellows don't match perfectly, you could definitely fudge it for a picture. And now for a couple of quick size comparisons, here we have the 20th Anniversary Iron Man alongside the Marvel Legends AI Iron Man and the Marvel Legends Iron Man 2020. And it's kind of cool to see how they're kind of taking this basic Iron Man look and finding ways to tweak it and give us a bunch of different versions of Iron Man. And I think they're doing a good job. Even though this 20th Anniversary is different from these two in regards to sculpt, it's similar, but they're tweaking things little by little and just kind of adding things to the base concept and just making it work for a bunch of different Iron Mans. And I think that's awesome. And then for a couple of more examples of that whole idea, here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Deluxe War Machine and the Marvel Legends Silver Centurion Iron Man. And yeah, I just really like the way all these Hasbro Iron Man figures look together. It's going to make for a very cool, old school feeling Hall of Armor. And next up, we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Modular Iron Man and the Mezco 112 Collective Classic Iron Man. And I really hope that Hasbro gives us a Modular Iron Man that has the same colors as this 20th anniversary version. Because in my mind, when it comes to the Modular armor, I just kind of think of those bright yellow colors. Kind of the way he looked in the Marvel vs. Capcom games or in the cartoon from the 90s. And just that whole era, in my mind, he had the bright yellow colors. I like this gold one though. I think it looks really good. I'm happy they gave it to us, but they got to give us the bright yellow colors eventually. I'm sure they'll get to it. And of course, here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And then last but not least, we have them alongside his fellow Avengers. On the left, we have the 80th anniversary Captain America, soon to be replaced by the 20th anniversary Captain America. And then on the opposite side, we have the 80th anniversary Thor. And I'm not really sure what they could do to improve on that figure, you know? Like if they decided to give us some other type of 20th anniversary Thor. I know that that figure didn't come out 20 years ago because that was like a couple waves into the whole Toy Biz era. But if they decided to like redo him somehow, I'm not really sure what they could do to add to what they already gave us with this one, except for like a cloth cape, which they don't really do. This one has a cape from Harker Customs and as it is right now, it's pretty much perfect in my opinion. I think it's an awesome Thor. And in the articulation department, there are no surprises. His articulation is exactly the same as it is on the AI Iron Man and the 80th Anniversary Iron Man. Even with the new torso, nothing really changes. The articulation setups are pretty much identical. He does have a little bit more range at the hips because he doesn't have the discs. But aside from that, if you have the 80th Anniversary Iron Man or the AI Iron Man, you know exactly what you're getting into as far as the articulation goes. But let's go ahead and take a very quick look starting off at the head. He does have a ball peg at the neck, which means we could get his head to go side to side which is nice and he does have a little bit of tilt but not a whole lot he is able to look up to right there which is nice for flight poses so that's really good and then he's able to look down to about right there which is pretty decent as well and then for the torso we do have the standard ab crunch but it only crunches forward to about right there so it's not a whole lot and then it goes back to right there it's not a crazy amount but it's enough to help with those flight poses so you know it's all good yeah, you could get some nice flight poses out of this guy. So that's awesome. And then he does have a swivel at the waist. For the arms, we have ball jointed shoulders that do go all the way around. You could bring his arms up to the side a really good amount. Feels like his shoulders aren't at risk of being scraped like they were on the other Iron Man figures. So that's a good thing. But yeah, his arms get out to the side a pretty good amount. And then he does have upper bicep swivel. He has double jointed elbows which only bend to right there because the big piece around his forearm but that's okay and then at the wrist we have a hinge and a swivel the open repulsor hands do not have any articulation though so you're not able to hinge with these hands and then let's see what we have going on for the legs so like I said before without the discs on the side the legs get a little bit more movement so you could get his legs to go out to the side to about right there which is pretty decent for a dude in armor. They could kick forward to right there, which is not a whole lot, but you know, it'll work. And they could only go back to about right there. So not a whole lot of range at the hips, but you know, I could definitely live with it. And then he does have upper thigh swivel, 
double jointed knee which bends to right there which is pretty nice even with the big piece around his his lower leg there that'll work and then he does have a boot swivel then at the foot he does have rocking ankles and you could bring his foot forward to right there which is nice and you could bring them up to right there which is nice and I know with some of the other Iron Man figures, the uh, like the <laughs> biceps would be switched or the lower legs would be switched. That doesn't appear to be the case with this guy. So that's nice. But yeah, as far as the articulation goes, not a whole lot, but enough for Iron Man, I think. You could definitely have fun posing him. And most importantly, you could get him into flight poses, which is the thing you want to be able to do when it comes to Iron Man. All right, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think this is a pretty great Iron Man figure. Yes, he does feel very familiar and similar to the 80th anniversary and the AI version, but I was a big fan of those figures too, so I'm okay with the similarities. And I do think there's enough unique things going on here to make him feel different and exciting. I think they did a good job sculpting the torso. The head sculpt is really nice. He does come with the unmasked Tony Stark head, which is good too, even though this is not my favorite. Tony Stark head that we've gotten in Marvel Legends. I still think it's nice and it captures the look that it was going for pretty accurately. You know, like that old school 70s demon in a bottle era Iron Man. I think this head works very well for that. But the title of the best Tony Stark head still belongs to the 80th anniversary version. Uh, but yeah, this guy came out nice, man. I like the accessories that he comes with aside from the heads. He has two sets of hands. You know, you got the blast effects, the smoke effect. That's all very cool. So yeah, this is a great figure. Articulation isn't amazing, but it's enough for Iron Man. And, you know, I like it. I'm having fun posing him around and messing with them. And then as far as this backdrop thing goes... I don't know, I kind of have mixed feelings. I think that it's going to look cool to have him like displayed in front of it. Like if you make a display around all these 20th anniversary figures with the, uh, you know, with the backdrop like that, maybe like on the shelf, it'll look really cool. But I kind of feel like maybe they should have left this out because <laughs> people are bound to compare this to getting a comic book and an actual diorama in the Toy Biz days, especially since these are kind of like a, you know, paying homage to Toy Biz. It's kind of like, okay, we're paying homage, but then we're kind of giving you a little less. Even though, I, you know, I would argue that we're not necessarily getting less because we do have extra heads, extra accessories, and a superior figure. So that's good stuff. But I think that people are going to be drawn to compare the actual diorama and the comic book to this thing here. And I don't know, it's just going to kind of just kind of a bad look a little bit. I don't know. It's just something for people to cry about. And that's always... That's always fun, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I think them putting this in here, kind of making it, they're kind of giving people reasons to, to bash them, you know, it's like, oh, they gave us a piece of cardboard instead of a diorama, it's like, okay, whatever, they're giving us a better figure, that's what it's all about, but still, you know, people are going to cry. Anyways, I think it has the potential to look cool, and I'm probably going to display the figures like that, I think that's going to look awesome on the shelf, but, you know, overall, I think this is a really good figure, and... The, the whole setup is nice. I really like the packaging that he comes in. I can't wait to get an extra and hang it on my wall. I think that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get uh, the 20th anniversary Captain America. Damn it, I feel like everybody has it already. <laughs> I'm just sitting here waiting, so hopefully I get it soon. And I do look forward to seeing what other like Toy Biz inspired things they give us. I would like to see them do some like Spider-Man classics retro type figures. I think that would be cool. Or maybe some Fantastic Four classics. I know they've started to give us some Fantastic Four figures uh, that are that are kind of paying homage to the five inch days, but I would like to see some Fantastic Four classic stuff I think that would be fun, too But anyway, I do think this is a great figure and with that I think that's it Thank you so much for watching Please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff Also be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live if you're not aware I do go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And every Friday at 7 p.m. So come through let's talk about toys and get weird. Thank you very much. Peace <laughs>